And now, to show us where human life comes from, here's that expert on the design of living things. Now it's wrong, wrong, wrong. <clears throat> D is his name, design is his game. Here's Dr. D. Ah, this is terrible, terrible. Psst, Dr. D, the people. <laughs> Uh, maybe it's time for the sign. The sign? The sign? The sign? Yeah! yeah the, the sign! sign. <laughs> it's Dr. D's Birds and Bees video show. Today's episode, Marilyn and Buzz and the Human Life Machine. find out about the human life machine. But you seem, well, unhappy. Furious! Look at these plans for my new house. It's so boring. Hey, maybe these plans can help us show how human life begins. Huh? <laughs> Just go with me on this, will ya? Huh? Because when you talk about where life comes from, you're talking about... The miracle of life itself. It's the story about the fascinating differences between male and female, and the story of nature's deepest, most profound secrets. Impressive, isn't it? Uh huh. <laughs> Almost as impressive as my musical abilities. You ready? Take the cow and the koala, and the pig and the impala, and the squirrel and the kangaroo. And the two kids all make babies, baby. You can see they're not so different from you. You, 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 you see they're not so different from you. There's a papa and a mama for the chicken, goat, and llama. There's a reason we come two by two. And when you're married to a mate, you're part of living things in nature, and your babies will be part of you too. Two to two to two to two to two, and your babies will be part of you too. Yeah, I'm a regular musical genius. Oh, uh, Dr. D, do you have a moment to... Eh, not right now. I'm in the middle of something here. <clears throat> Very well. Okay, think about the materials that are used to build a house. Well, there are bricks... ...and wood. Yeah, and those shingle things. Right. Well, a baby, like all living things, is made of its own kind of building blocks, called cells. They're tiny. Billions of them, just in your little finger. All different kinds of cells. Hair cells, skin cells, eye cells, teeth cells, and, of course, nose cells. <laughs> just to see if you're still with me. But how do those different cells know what to do? An excellent question. See, a plan of a house isn't a real house. No, it's a set of instructions to show how the different parts all work together. Well, it's the same with living things. Each and every cell I, uh, carries inside it a set of instructions called genes. Genes? Not genes. Genes. Genes are instructions for each cell that tell it what kind of cell it is and what its job is. So, for instance, there are brain cells that have the job of thinking up more excellent questions. Well, um, where do the instructions come from? Don't you love them? From your parents. Half from your mother, and half from your father. Ever stop to think why there are two sexes? Well, uh, gee, you know, I never... Uh... I guess not. Well, let's see. Uh, pretend I'm from another planet. Yeah, it's weird, but just go with me on this. Now, the gene instructions have caused the cells of my body to grow in this particular way. Nice, huh? Lovely. Now, on this planet, there's only one sex, not two. So watch what happens. If I have a child, he or it will be an exact copy of me. Why is that? Because the instructions that form a parent's body are passed on to form the child's body. On this planet, where there's only one sex, those instructions are passed on to my child directly. 
They don't mix with anybody else's instructions, so they don't change. And exact duplication of instructions, exact duplication of parent. Gorgeous. And if the child had a child, he would look like me too. And on, and on, and on, and on, and we get it! Right, it's boring! That's why here on Earth there are two sexes, male and female. So that half the instructions come from the mama, and the other half from the papa. Then the instructions can be mixed together to form a baby that is similar to both, but altogether unique. It's clear, yes? It's clear, no. Because babies don't come from mixing balls. So where do they come from? And what's the human life machine? Thanks so much for asking. Ta-da! The human life machine. <laughs> well, I see we've entered the giggle zone. <laughs> well, yeah, this is kind of embarrassing. It's, you know, private stuff. Absolutely right. Private. And it's perfectly fine to squirm and giggle at first because all this makes you uncomfortable. But these parts of the body are what continues life on this planet. And you'd be much better off, much safer, if you know how they work. So, have we passed through the giggle zone? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Then here we go. The female half of the human life machine manufactures a cell called the egg. That carries half of the instructions for a new baby. The male half manufactures many smaller cells that each carry the other half of the instructions. Each one is called a sperm cell. Human life forms only if these two cells meet and mix their instructions together. The female half of the machinery does even more, because it's here that the meeting takes place and the new life develops. See, this is an ovary. One in a set of two. A new egg is released from one or the other ovary every 28 days or so. Then it travels down this tube called the fallopian tube. The egg lands in the lining of this, the uterus. If the egg has met a sperm along the way, the lining will serve as a nice soft bed of nutrients and the egg and sperm develop into a baby. If the egg doesn't meet a sperm, it and the lining pass out of the body through the vagina. Uh, Dr. D, got a minute here too. Yeah, not right now. We're on our way to see the male half of the machine. Things are very different here. This is a testicle. Also one in a set of two. They manufacture the sperm cells. Only instead of making one at a time, the testicles are constantly making millions of them. The sperm cells can leave the male's body by traveling through this tube and out the penis. And that's the human life machine. Each part ready to do its job. Pretty well designed, huh? Huh? Huh. Doesn't make sense yet, huh? Oh. No, there are two separate parts. How do the sperm and the egg meet? These kids ask the best questions. Now there's a design problem for you. How would you get the sperm and the egg to meet in the fallopian tube? Well, the egg is already there. Mmm, somehow the sperm cells have to enter the female's body. Correct. And here's how the human life machine is beautifully designed so that that can happen. If the male and female are in love, and are old enough to start a family, meaning they are mature enough and secure enough to carry out the huge responsibilities that come along with a new baby. Phew! And they can handle the hard work, too. Then they might look at each other with a special kind of attraction in their eyes. The attraction of one sex for the other, and the machinery starts up. Hearts beat faster, breathing quickens. In the male, the penis becomes straight and hard, called... 